Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. And now, Superman. Superman walks the earth and mingles with men as mild spectacle Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet. As our story opens today, Superman, in his character of Clark Kent, has just telephoned his story of the North Star Mine to his editor, Perry White. White offers his congratulations and also gives Kent a bit of welcome news. Listen. I'm all finished out here, Mr. White. Nice work. Kent, you did a good job with that North Star Mine story. Now, I've got a little surprise for you. Surprise? Ever hear of San Miguel Penitentiary? It's a model prison near where you are. San Miguel? Sure, I've heard of it. So have you, don't you remember? Remember what? Well, that's where they sent the wolf and Kino. The two fellows who tried to wreck that train, the Silver Clipper? Say, that's right. The wolf and Kino. Well, if you see them, give them my regards. Now, what's the idea, Mr. White? Well, just this, Kent. We've sent Lois Lane out to San Miguel to do a feature story on the modern penitentiary. She's out there now. Join her and bring her back with you. You'll be company for one another. Oh, gee, thanks, Mr. White. Ah, forget it. Have a good trip, Kent. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. White. Operator. Hello, operator. Is there a garage in town where I can rent a car? Yes. Kennedy's? Okay, please connect me. Hiring a car, Clark Kent heads out at once on the dusty road to San Miguel, 50 miles away. Meanwhile, in the prison itself, a strange unrest has taken possession of the men within the walls. All unknowing, the authorities escort Lois Lane on a tour of the prison. But even as Lois looks down from a window of the warden's office, two men fall casually into step in the exercise yard below. One is Kino. The other, the dark, sinister figure we have come to know as the wolf. All right, Kino. Just keep on walking. Not too fast and not too slow. We can tuck around the corner of the steam plant, boss. No, no. Better stay out in plain sight. I'll get this now, Kino. The break is set for today. What time? After supper in the dining hall. It's all arranged. Hey, boss, uh, what about the tunnel? Keep quiet about the tunnel, Kino. Do you want to bring Tom, Dick, and Harry in on this? All right, all right. How far along is it? Almost done. And so far, no one suspects a thing. <laughs> How could they when it's being drilled from the outside? That's what it means to have a guy like the yellow mask on your side. Quiet, quiet. Here's a guard. Keep moving there. No hanging around in the corners. Come on there, move. You're out here for exercise. I knew the mask would spring us sooner or later. Yeah. It's about time, you know. He's left us alone far too long. Well, what do you care if he gets us out now? My friend, there'll be a settlement between me and the mask. I should never have gone to jail at all. Now, he knows what he's doing, boss. And if you know what's good for you, just take what comes and don't tangle with him. Don't worry, Kino. If he can use me, I can use him. I'll let him get us out of here, and then we'll see. Well, what else, boss? They're going to ring the bell right away. Remember what I say, Kino. Right after supper, before we've marched out, there'll be a disturbance. I've attended to that. Who's in on it? All the men we need. Most of them will head for the gates. I've arranged that, too. But you and I and a few more will rush the steam plant. Well, what's that for? Well, for one thing, it's close to the walls. For another... Never mind now. There goes the bell. Hey, boss. Look up there in the window of the warden's office. Hey, what's that Jane doing? Oh, yes, yes. I understand she's writing up the prison for a newspaper kino. Well, if she stays till supper time, she'll have a real story. And that's less than an hour to go. Less than an hour to go. And all unconscious of the impending prison break, Lois Lane works up the details of her story while the warden offers every assistance. Anything else, Miss Lane? You've been at it since early afternoon. Oh, I'm not nearly finished yet, warden. Well, you've seen about all there is to see. Aren't you getting hungry? What time is it? Very close to supper time. <laughs> That's another thing I want to know about. The woman's angle again, warden. What do the men get to eat? Good, wholesome food, Miss Lane. Uh, nothing fancy, of course. Could I watch them? See what they get tonight, for instance? Well, it's more or less what you'll get yourself, Miss Lane, if you'll be my guest. Oh, Warden, that's awfully nice of you, but... Well, would it be against the rules if I watched the prisoners in the dining hall? Hmm, 
Six o'clock dinner. Half past five now. I'll tell you what. How would you like to see the infirmary? Oh, fine. Well, now there's just about time. And when you get through there, why, I'll drop you off at the dining hall. Whatever you say, Warden. Shall we start right along? Time passes. Ten minutes. Twenty minutes. A half hour. And suddenly the quiet routine of the prison is broken by frantic bells and the shrieking wail of the siren. Warden. Warden, they've overpowered the guards in the dining room, barricaded themselves in. Clancy, quick. Who's the leader? The wolf. Some of them are getting ready to crash the main gates. You better call out the militia. Warn the state police by short wave. You'd better hurry, Warden. Calling state police. Cars 5927. Right at San Miguel Prison. Close all roads leading to and from San Miguel. Stop all cars. Close off entire area. Stand by for further orders. I will repeat. Calling state police cars 5927. Sirens, state police, militia, all roads blocked off. And meanwhile, Clark Kent in his hired car speeds northward toward San Miguel through a forest of towering pine. Closer, ever closer, and presently a curious sound in the distance comes over the wilderness to his supersensitive ears. The road makes a sudden turn, and in the twilight he sees men in uniform firing his way. A police whistle stabs the quiet. Call it up, buddy. This is as far as you go. Oh, what's the matter, officer? Roadblock? Yeah, block right here. Turn around and head back where you came from. Why, can't I get through? Where you bound? San Miguel. I have a date at the prison. Yeah, what kind of a date? Why, I'm a newspaper man, Clark Kent of the Daily Planet. A reporter, hey? How did you get wind of this so quick? Wind of what? Don't give me that stuff. Who told you about the riot at San Miguel? Riot? When? Right now, buddy. And we're under orders to stop all cars bound in or out. Oh, look, officer. I'm sorry, but I've just got to go through. What's the matter, Def? I said we're stopping all cars. Come to think of it, climb out of that jalopy. If there's trouble at San Miguel, I just haven't time to stop. Haven't time? Say, who do you think you're talking to? I'm you... sorry. I'd like to stay, but I really can't. So long, officer. If I can't take my car, I'll just make a run for it. See you at San Miguel. Hey, get that guy, Bill. Chase him. Catch him. Hey, look at him go. Hop on your motorcycle, Doyle. I'll catch him. He can't play tricks like this on me. Jump in the sidecar. There he goes up ahead around that curb. When I lay my hands on that fresh guy, I'll stretch him out like a rug. Hang on. Uh, you'll be lucky if you even see him, Doyle. He's going like a jackrabbit. So are we. We'll be hitting 75. My gosh, look. Will you look? Who is that guy, Doyle? He's leaving us behind like we're standing still. Why, he's flying. I'm seeing things. I don't believe it. Look, we're doing 75, 80. And he's getting further away every second. Look at him. Sorry, boys. I'd like to stay and chat, but I can't do it now. If there's trouble at San Miguel, I've got to be there, and be there in a hurry. Up we go, and faster, faster. High over the desolate waste, Superman wings his way toward the gray walls and towers of San Miguel, scene of riot and danger, while inside the prison itself, in the office of the warden. Hello. Warden speaking. Why, yes, Colonel Pepper, but it looks bad. There's about a hundred of them milling about the yard. Well, the rest are in the dining hall with their leader. You'll send two companies of militia? Good. Rush them, Colonel. Every moment counts. Warden. Warden, they're going to rush the front gate. They've got a battering ram. Two companies of militia are on the way. There won't be time, Warden. You better call the tower, sir. Machine guns will drive them back. No guns, Clancy. Warn the guards. I can't shoot them down in cold blood. Try tear gas. Oh, we have, but there's too much wind for gas. Bullets are the only thing. No, Clancy. Try tear gas again. Drop it from the roof. Now hurry. They're at the gate. Hurry. Ah, there's the prison. And there's the riot. That state trooper was right. Well, I think it's time Superman took a hand in this before somebody gets hurt. Down. Down. Down out of the sky hurtles an amazing figure in blue costume and red cloak. Vaults the high wall, appears out of the tear gas smoke as the screaming convicts mass for a concerted rush on the main gates of the prison, carrying a huge timber as a battering ram. Come on. Come on. All right, we got it. 
Grab hold, you guys. It's 20 feet long and 2 feet thick. Come on, let's go. Hey! Hey, who's that guy? That guy in the red tent. Where'd he come from? Stop that. Drop that timber. Rush him. Knock him out of the way. I said drop that timber. All right. It just means I've got to take it away from hey! you. Hey, what's he doing? What's your guy? Hey, he's got the timber. He just snatched it loose. Back. Get back. He's crazy. He's swinging it like a baseball bat. Look out. Run back. Run. 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 Swinging the huge 20-foot timber like a bamboo cane, Superman clears a space before the main gates and drives the screaming, terror-stricken convict back across the yard and into the cell block, where amazed guards put them swiftly under lock and key. But what of the wolf and Kino and the handful of convicts still at large? And what of Lois Lane, trapped in the dining hall when the riot broke out? Is she in the clutches of the wolf? Tune in next time and follow the story. And remember, be sure to tune in the next thrilling installment of the amazing transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature... Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman. When we last saw Superman, he had just driven back a mass of rioting convicts at the western penitentiary of San Miguel, using a 20-foot timber as a weapon. For a moment, the situation is saved, but only for a moment. The wolf and Kino are still barricaded in the dining hall with a few desperate convicts. As our story continues today, Superman has leaped into a cloud of tear gas and vanished. But already word of his unbelievable performance has reached the office of the warden and has also reached into the dining hall, the hiding place of Kino and the wolf. Listen. Hey, boss, where are you? Here, Kino, what's the matter? Close the door. Listen. I just heard from one of the guys that tried to rush the gates. They couldn't do it. Why not? They were stopped. Forced back into the cell block. What stopped them? Not what. Who? Hey, boss, it was a guy in a red cloak that jumped over the wall, right out of a cloud of gas. What? A man in a red cloak? Boss, it's the same one, the one that stopped us from wrecking the silver clipper and broke up our car and turned us over to the cops. He's here at San Miguel. No, no, it's not possible. Yeah, and I'll tell you something else, too. That reporter's here. That Clark Kent. Clark Kent? Yeah, I seen him myself, running around a corner to the warden's office. Ah, so Kent's here too, huh? We owe that smart young man something, you know, and I think this is the time to pay him. Kent doesn't know it yet, but the minute he makes a move or gets in our way, well... I get you. Say, how you gonna wake it? Look, you know, it's almost time. That gas is like a smoke screen over the yard. So what? Just this. When I give the signal, you and I and a few of the boys will dash across the yard to the steam plant. Hey, boss, suppose they shoot at us from the towers. Ah, uh, don't worry, they won't. In the first place, the warden doesn't want bloodshed. He's soft, you know that. He'll do his best to break the riot with tear gas. He'll tell him to shoot if we make a break. When we're ready to break out, Kino, they won't even see us. And they won't shoot when we rush for the steam plant. I've got a little trump card, Kino. A little surprise for the warden and Mr. Clark Kent. Help me fix this broken telephone wire, Kino. Open that box. If I can get the phone to work, I've got a little message for the warden. Now find that loose end. And, and meanwhile, Superman, having forced the rioting convicts back into the cell block, unaware that the wolf and Kino are barricaded in the dining hall, enters the warden's office as Clark Kent. Who are you? Is this Warden Bowman? Yes. I'm Clark Kent of the Daily Planet. Uh, warden speaking. Warden, I'm calling from the dining hall. What? Who is this? You don't need to know, but you should know this. Miss Lois Lane is right here with us. You've got Lois Lane? Quite so, Warden. At the moment, she's safe. But she won't be safe long unless you do as you're told. Man, think what you're doing. Oh, I've thought, Warden. I've had weeks and months to think. When we leave this place, the girl is going with us. If there's any shooting, she'll be the first one to stop a bullet. Wait. And 
And if there's a reporter named Clark Kent in your office, tell him to remember, too. Tell him to remember the Silver Clipper. Wait, wait, come back here. Warden, the Silver Clipper, the man who spoke to you was the wolf. How did you hear that? How did you know who he was? Never mind. If he's got Lois Lane, there isn't a second to waste. I'll be back later, Warden. Hey, Kent, where are you going? Just wait and see. I'm going to rush the dining hall. Have your guards ready when the mob comes out. So long. Once outside the warden's office, hidden by the heavy clouds of rolling gas, Clark Kent in a split second becomes Superman, man of steel, and streaks for the roof of the dining hall. Those devils. If they really got Lois, I'll give them something they'll never forget. Ah, there's the dining hall. Look at those guards trying to force the way in with tear gas. They'll never make it. Watch how long it takes Superman. Down. Down. Now then, won't take me long to get in there. I'll rip through this roof in no time. With hardly an effort, Superman bends to the roof, seizes sheets of metal in his bare hands, strips them off like paper, crashes through planks and beams, and leaps into the dining hall. Hey, 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 what's that? That guy in the red cape. I seen him at the gate. Run, beat it. All over, boys. The riot stops right here. Now open those doors and march out in the yard with your hands up. Go on, move. Who is this guy? Run! Quick! Quick! Keep moving. Out there and turn yourselves over to the guards. And if I were you, I'd have my hands up. Faster, boys. Faster. And Kino. Didn't see them anywhere. Must be hiding in the cellar with Lois. But they won't hide long. Lois! Lois Lane, where are you? All right, if I've got to rip this place apart, I'll do it. But you'd better not be there when I find you, Wolf. Here I come. But the Wolf is not to be found. Under cover of Superman's attack on the dining hall, he and Kino, carrying Lois between them, have slipped out a side door into clouds of smoke and made their way to the steam plant close against the prison's outer wall. There, with a small band of helpers... Boss, what do we do with the girl? You beast! Let me go! Throw her in the corner, Kino. No, 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 don't untie her hands. What are you going to do? Keep you with us, Miss Lane, as an antidote for Mr. Clark Kent. Clark Kent? Quite so. If Kent bothers us this time, I'm sorry, but it won't be too healthy for you. Kent? But he isn't anywhere near you. Oh, pardon me, but he is. Right up there in the warden's office, Miss Lane. Kent! Kent! Stop it, Kino, stop it. Yes, he'll be all right, but you better hurry for us. They know we're here and they're getting ready to rush us. All right. Get the cover up the steam tunnel. Be all ready in a minute. Hold them off. Of course, they're getting closer. You over there. Have you got the steam lines rigged? All ready. The rush is now. We'll draw them in speed. Here they come. All right. Turn on the steam. Point the nozzles down the yard. Let them have it. <laughs> While half of the wolf's men work frantically to open the tunnel beneath the steam plant leading to escape, the others fight off prison guards with live steam from the boilers. And meanwhile, not having found either the wolf or Lois in the cellar of the dining hall, Superman streaks back to the office of the warden as Clark Kent. We're rounding them up now, sir. Came pouring onto that dining hall as if the devil was after them. Uh, half of them said the devil was after them. They yelled about a guy in a red cape. Said he came right through the roof. What about the ones in the steam plant? We'll get them, warden. Warden, any news of Lois Lane? Kent, where have you been? Down in the yard, around the dining hall. I haven't seen a sign of Lois. Warden, what do you think? Kent, I don't know. Warden, sir, they've turned live steam into hose lines. Look, look, they're fighting off the guard. The fools, what do they think they can gain by that? They can't get anywhere from the steam plant. Warden, sir, I saw them. They ran across from the dining hall. They had the girl with them, Warden. They've got the girl in there in the steam plant. Hey, where are you going, Kent? Hey, call that reporter back. Stop it. Catch him. Kent! A race against time. Lois in the power of the wolf. Kent dashes into the yard, heedless of the warning cries of the guards, plunges into a cloud of steam, and at once becomes Superman. Oh, no, I won't. I'll have them out there in no time. Steam can't hurt me. Go on, boys. Turn it on full. And watch out for yourselves, because here I come, right through that door. Now then. Where are they? 
Oh, they fastened those hose lines to the window. Lois! There she is. Faded, too. Got to get her out of here. Turn off that steam, quick. When she comes around, she'll just see Clark Kent. And so will all the rest. Oh, the tunnel. Down that tunnel. Hey, this way. Miss Lane says they got to wait on the tunnel. No, they didn't. Hurry up. We got him on the other side. Miss Lane, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Well, I reckon you can thank your friend Clark Kent for that. Kent? I didn't see you. How did you get here? Oh, gee, Miss Lane, never mind that now. Point is, I did get here and just in time. Was it you that got me out? I thought I saw a tremendous figure in a red cape. Gosh, I sure hate to disappoint you, Miss Lane. I guess you figured I was Superman. Oh, no. Don't worry, Clark Kent. Why did you stop to look after me? If you'd been on your job, you'd have gone after those convicts down the tunnel. Oh, no. You'll never be confused with Superman. Oh, look. Here comes the warden. Warden, is everything all right? Hey, listen. We got them all but two. Two of those guys got away, broke through the tunnel, and got loose. Warden. Which ones? Which ones? That fellow named Keno and the one they call the wolf. Keno and the wolf have escaped. Lois Lane is safe and unharmed, but the wolf and Keno have made good their escape, aided by the power of the yellow mask. And unknown to Clark Kent, a strange and terrible adventure lies directly ahead. Be sure to tune in next time and follow the story. And remember... Be sure to tune in the next thrilling installment of the amazing transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman. Faster than an airplane. Stronger than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Champion of the weak and the oppressed. Tireless fighter for truth and justice. When we last saw him, Superman had just rescued Lois Lane from a gang of convicts at San Miguel Prison. Only to learn at the last minute that the two leaders of the riot... Kino and the wolf have made good their escape in the confusion. Alarms ring and sirens wail, but the two fugitives are nowhere to be seen. Kent and Lois return home, bringing their story of the riot. And by a curious coincidence, the wolf and Kino arrive in the same city at about the same time. Following instructions, they make their way to the underground hideout of the Yellow Mask. Listen. Now listen, boys. You sure you know where you're going? Certainly, you know. Although why we were told to take this roundabout way, I'm sure I can't tell you. Leave that to the mask, boys. He knows what he's doing. Indeed, you know. Then perhaps you can explain why he left us so long in that confounded jail. Now, he knows what he's doing, He boys. should never have let us go to jail at all. Well, how could he help it? That guy Kent, the reporter. It's his business to help it. He made fools of us. Better not let him hear you say that, boys. Uh, he'll hear me say more than that when I find him. Uh, stop where you are. We've arrived. Well, I don't see nothing. This is just a blank wall. Watch, Kino. There. Keep looking, Kino. Look right at the wall. Gee, it's a door. Open up right in the rock. Inside, quick. Uh. And just in time, too. There's a police car not far off. Hey, you think they're looking for us? Possibly. But they'll never find us. Stand back, you know, while the door closes. Hey, it's pitch black. I can't see where I am. It's a passage. Just walk straight ahead. Is this where we'll find the mayor's? I hope so, Kino. And when I do find him, there'll be a settlement which is quite a bit overdue. Hey, boss, now think what you're saying. Kino... I've made up my mind. The mask has run things far too long. It's my turn now. Now, you can't say that. But I do say it. Why should I take second place? I'll run things myself. From now on, there's not room for both of us. As to that, my friend, I entirely agree with you. It's him. 
The mask. Turn on the lights. In the house of the mask, my friend, be careful what you say. Very well, mask, you heard me. It's either you or I. And since I happen to have a pistol here in my pocket... So, you brought a pistol, Wolf. This is the last time you'll stand in the way of high voltage. <laughs> that finishes the wolf. Kino, I think I heard you use the term boss. You will remember after this to whom it applies. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, well, whatever you say. Uh, what did you want to see us about? Plans, Kino. Great plans in which you shall have a share. Plans that concern millions of dollars and thousands of lives. Stand quietly where you are, Kino, and listen. And almost at the same time that the yellow mask tells Kino of his plans, Editor Perry White of the Daily Planet speaks to Clark Kent and Lois Lane of a new assignment. Hello there, Lois. Come in, close the door. Did you want to see both of us, Mr. White? I certainly did. You made out so well on that prison break that I'm going to send you and Kent out again. Oh, gee, that's great, Mr. White. I'm sure Mr. Kent could cover it much better alone. Well, you're going along, Lois, so sit down and listen. Have either of you heard what's going on in Dryerville? I haven't heard a thing about anything. I have, Chief. Oh, the human encyclopedia. He knows about everything. You know where Dryerville is, Lois? Only more or less, Mr. White. Well, it's up in the hills. A flourishing little city of about 30,000. And since about two weeks ago, they've been calling it the Jinx Town. <laughs> the Jinx Town? All those accidents. Is that why, Mr. White? Well, first they thought it was funny. And then it got serious. Now they don't know what to think. Why, what happened? Curious, unbelievable accidents. Nothing very striking at first. Just all the radio sets went out of whack. All at once? All at once. And then the telephone. Say, that might have been serious. It was, Ken. Then two days ago, although there hadn't been any rains, the town was flooded. Flooded? Three feet deep in water. Without any warning at all, the Jefferson River went over its banks and mighty near drowned them all out. Mr. White, anything else? That was two days ago, Kent. Yesterday, all the electric power in the city went off. And today, they were rocked by a series of earthquakes. Earthquakes? What, in this section of the country? Well, heavy explosions far underground, and they don't know what to make of it. People are excited, naturally, and now they're just a little bit afraid. Well, do you blame them? Well, asking themselves, what's behind all this? And that's where you're sending me and Kent, Mr. White. If you're sure you don't mind, Lois. Well, I'd feel safer with a more adequate escort. Oh, gosh, Miss Lena. I'll do the best I can to keep you out of trouble. Thank you, Mr. Kent. I'm usually able to do that much for myself. When do we leave, Mr. White? As soon as you can. Get an advance from the cashier and hire a car. A car? What's the matter with the train? Mm, I don't know. I just have a feeling. Mr. White, what do you mean? There's something back of this, Lois. I don't understand it. All these things aren't accidents. Mr. White, you think they're intended? I don't know, Kent. But if they are, well, I'd rather have you in a car than on a train heading into Dyerville. Uh, come along. I'll see you as far as the cashier. <laughs> Reporting from the Daily Planet office. Go on, A15. The reporter, Clark Kent, and the feature writer, Lois Lane, will arrive in Dyerville by automobile this evening. That is all. Well, are you sure you know which way you're going, Mr. Kent? Look, Lois, couldn't you call me Clark? Sorry, for some reason I seem to prefer Mr. Kent, and I also prefer Miss Lane. All right, Miss Lane. As I was saying, are you sure you're on the right road? Positive. There was a route sign back away to Dyerville. Then aren't we almost there? What time is it? Uh, too dark to see. Mind turning on the dome light? Thanks. Uh, it's half past 11. Look out, there's a car coming. Oh, I, I see it. Look out, he's coming straight at us. What? Mr. Kent! Uh... Oh, the idiot, he almost put us in the ditch. Driving like a maniac, too. What's the matter? N nothing, Mr. Kent. Was there anything strange about that car? Strange? How do you mean? I thought... Well, of course, I didn't get a very good look at it, but I thought I'd seen it before. Not me. I thought it passed us a while ago, going the other way. What would he be doing that for? Oh, look here, Lois. I, I mean, Miss Lane. You're tired and upset. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, I say you are. Now, think about something else. How about switching on the radio, huh? Thanks, I'd rather not. Oh, come on. At least we'll get the late news. Must you hear the news? Oh, why not? Give it a chance to warm up first. Look, Miss Lane, they're ahead. That's Dyerville. Down there, over the river? Uh-huh, that's the Jefferson. We cross the toll bridge, and then we're in Dyerville. Nothing doing on the radio? I really don't know. Maybe it's broken. Huh. Lights up all right. Look out. 
There's a car coming up behind us. Yeah, coming fast, too. Mr. Kent, be careful. He's not turning out. Look out! I'm the crazy idiot. Mr. Kent, it was the same car. You're right. Wait till I get his number. Hang on. Oh. Well, what's that? Not the radio. I'm going to catch that fellow if it's the last thing I do. Go back, Mr. Kent. What? Go back. Go back. Go back. Mr. Kent, that voice. Where does it come from? The radio. That's not possible. Someone called me by name. Go back, Mr. Kent. Go back. Go back. Go back. That car. That's where it comes from. There's a radio transmitter in that car. Now I've got to catch him. Right ahead. There's the bridge. No bridge or no bridge, I'm going to catch that car. Hang on, Lois. It's gone, Mr. Kent. There's not a sign of it. Well, there must be. It can't have vanished. Mr. Kent, be careful. The toll bridge. There's a man there and the bars are down. Look out! We're going right through them! Did you have to go so fast? Just look what you've done to the gates. <laughs> Lucky if they don't take away your license. Hey, why do you think you're gone? Can't you see the lights? I'm sorry, officer. Really, I bet I... you'll be sorry. Let me see your license, young fellow. This here's a toll bridge, not a speedway. I'll pay the toll. I hope to tell you you'll pay the toll. And you'll pay for them gates, too. And about $50 for reckless driving. Oh, it, it, it wasn't reckless driving, officer. I was chasing that car ahead, and I just what had car? to... What car? What car ahead? You're the only car on this bridge in the last half hour. I tell you, there was a car. I saw it. Keep on, and you'll see pink elephants and green elephants. Oh, all right. How much is the toll? Uh, never you mind the toll. That's the least of your worries. The bridge. It's shaking. What's the matter? The bridge. It's another quake. Run. Run. Got to save the bridge and save Lois. Not much time. Good thing it's dark. They couldn't see Clark Kent change into Superman. If I can get down underneath it, down on the piers, quick, it's going. Matter of seconds. Down. Down. Down through the darkness, Superman plummets like an arrow, while the great structure of struts and cables sways and groans above the river, while the car containing Lois Lane slips, halts, and slips again nearer to the sudden brink that yawns suddenly where a moment before was solid pavement. Can the man of steel save the bridge of steel? Or have matters already gone beyond the power of even his incalculable strength? And whose was the voice on the radio? And what terrible fate hangs over the town of Dyerville? Tune in next time and follow the story. And remember... Be sure to tune in the next thrilling installment of the amazing transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look. It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman. When we last saw him, Clark Kent was traveling toward the mountain city of Dyerville with Lois Lane to investigate a curious chain of disasters and accidents that had held the city in a grip of fear for the past eight days. But as they reached the toll bridge over the Jefferson River, leading into Dyerville, the bridge suddenly trembled and swayed. Lois screamed as their automobile slid toward the guardrail, and Kent leaped away in the darkness. As our story continues, he has become Superman. Red cloak streaming in the wind, he plummets down through the night in a desperate effort to save the bridge and prevent the car from plunging into the river below. Listen. That bridge is shaking like a tree in a high wind. If I can get down under it and hold it, find out what's wrong. Here we are. Why, the foundation's half gone. Blown apart as if it had been hit by a shell or a torpedo. Those girders are just hanging loose. If I can only put them back where they belong. I don't know. It's pretty far gone, but maybe I can make it. If I don't, the whole thing will fall up. Crash in the river. Blow us along with it. Now then, one more pull. <sighs> Made it. Twisted that steel work back into place. Now to return to Lois on the bridge as Clark Kent. Up! Up! What's happened? Where are the lights? So dark. Kent. 
Kent. Lois. I mean, Miss Lane. Are you all right? The bridge. What about the bridge? Oh, don't worry about the bridge. But what was it? What happened? I don't know. Maybe the foundation gave way in the flood. We'll be all right if we keep going. Come on, get back in the car. Uh, Lucky it didn't roll off the bridge and smash up. Kent, we can't cross now. Oh, yes, we can. I've paid the toll. Clark, Kent, you fool, I'm not thinking about the toll. The bridge will go down with us. No, it won't, Lois. It's safe now, I'm sure. Come on, get in. Here we go. Now, if you're the least bit afraid, just shut your eyes. Clark Kent and Lois Lane cross the damaged bridge safely and arrive in Dyerville. Next morning, in the office of the city commissioner, they wait for an interview. Oh, here he is now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. And this is Miss Lane, I take it, and Mr. Clark Kent, both of the Daily Planet. Sorry to bother you, Commissioner, but we're after a story about what's been going on in Dyerville. Yes, come into my office and close the door. All right. Well, sit down, Miss Lane, Mr. Kent. Thanks, Commissioner. We won't take up too much of your time. Yeah, don't worry. If you were ordinary reporters, you wouldn't take up any of it. I'd see to that. But I've had a call from your editor. Oh, you have? From Mr. White? Yes, Perry White of the Daily Planet. It's about you, Kent. Me? Yes, Mr. White tells me that you're not only a good reporter, but that you seem to have a knack of digging out what's back of things. Well, I'm sure I don't know. It's a knack or just dumb luck. Well, either one will do me. Because if I don't get to the bottom of this business, and soon... Uh, Just what's happening, Commissioner? Well, have you heard about the Jefferson Bridge last night? What? The South Pier was carried away as if a giant monster had bitten a chunk out of it. Good heavens, and we were on it. Yes, but that's not all. Whatever it was, some human agency or mysterious force not only almost took the bridge away, but put it back. What? That's what I say. Most of the steel girders were torn loose from their rivets, but someone replaced them, twisted them together so they'd hold. Why, only a Superman could have done it. Superman? Yeah. Just imagine that. Well, forget about the bridge. It's the least of what's happened. There was the matter of the electric power. Three days ago, it went completely out for no explainable reason. And what about that flood, Commissioner? Yes, yeah, yes, the flood. And the earthquakes or explosions or whatever they were. I tell you, I can't stand much more of this. None of us can. Why, we never know from one moment to another what's going to happen next. Huh. And there's uh, no explanation? No clue of any kind? Kent, not a one. What if they're not accidents? What if there's some human fiend behind all this? What's he trying to do? What does he want? Does he intend wiping the city off the map? Oh, no, no, no. Take it easy, Commissioner. There's probably some very simple explanation. All right. All right. Probably there is. But you find it, Kent. Go out and dig it up. Say, I've had the best men I know on it so far, and they haven't found a thing. I tell you, I'm at the end of my rope. Well, Miss Lane and I may be able to help, Commissioner. Well, I hope so, Kent. I hope so. Because if this madness doesn't stop soon, I think we'll all go out of our minds. If there's just one more catastrophe, one more unexplained accident... Hmm. Hello? Yes, yes, this is the Commissioner. What? Bart? When did it happen? Mr. Kent, what is it? Quiet, I want to hear. What? Yes? Well, get every boat in the river, you understand? Every boat... Yes, called tugs and police launches. But land that barge. Get it out of trouble. Listen, something's gone wrong on the river. Yes, yes, call me back. I'll be right here by the phone. Commissioner, what is it? What's happened? There's a railroad barge with 15 tank cars on it loaded with gasoline. It broke loose from its tug. What? It's drifting downstream toward the falls. Toward the falls? Yes, and they can't stop it. They can't stop it. The tide's too strong. They can't do a thing. Kent, where are you going? Where do you think? Out to find that barge. I'll see you later, Commissioner. What? You wait here, Miss Lane. Some story in that. I'll be back as soon as I can. Wait. Wait. I'll come to wait. Sorry, Lois. Can't stop now. There's an emergency like that. It's time Clark Kent gave way to Superman. Ah, here's a window. No one in sight. Good. We're up. Up and away. <laughs> Off like a streak of light, Superman leaps into the air, heads for the river, and disappears in a bank of mist. Meanwhile, the Jefferson River is a scene of terror and confusion. Whistles scream, but nothing can stop the swift course of the helpless railroad barge. Caught in the rapid current and moving ever faster toward the falls, the two men on the barge are frantic with fear. They can't get us. We're going faster and faster. Look, get ahead. Ain't that the falls? No, we're going over. We're going over, sure. We gotta jump. Jump and swim for it. No, no, don't jump. 
stay with the barge. It's our only chance. I tell you, we'll be killed, drowned, smashed to pieces. Jump. Jump, I tell you. Jump. Ah, there's the barge. And there are the falls, too. Not much time. Got to dive down there, grab that barge load of railroad cars, and tow them back where they came from. I must be careful. One spark might set that gasoline off. Down into the water. Down. Down. <coughs> now then, three good strokes and I'm there. One. Two. Three. Ah, got them. I've caught the barge. Now all I have to do is tow it back up the river. And without being seen. Here we go. Superman, exerting his terrific strength, brings the heavily loaded barge around in the river, forces it upstream, eases it safely into a dock, and disappears again in the murky water of the Jefferson River. And presently, back in the office of the city commissioner, where Lois still waits. There it is. There it is. That barge. It's gone over the falls. I hardly dare answer the phone. Shall I take it, Commissioner? No, no. Hello? Yes? What? You you say it's safe? It, it slid back upstream? Floated into a dock? And it didn't go over the falls? Say, wait a minute. You, you're sure? What? <laughs> I don't care how it happened. All I need to know is they're safe. Oh, Miss Lane, Miss Lane, that barge is all right. Well, Commissioner, what's happened? Well, I don't know. Some crazy, impossible story, but who cares about that? Yes, come in, come in. Hello, Commissioner. Oh. Hi, Miss Lane. Well, hello there, Kent. I guess you've heard the news, too, huh? About the barge? <laughs> yes, and I decided I might as well come back. <laughs> you didn't get your big story after all, did you, Mr. Kent? Oh, there's still a story, Miss Lane. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean? That affair of the railroad barge breaking away from its tug was no accident, sir. What? Mr. Kent knows all the answers, Commissioner. Those cars and that gasoline were meant to go over the Jefferson River Falls. Oh, well, Kent, you're joking. No, 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 I'm not joking. Mr. Kent, how do you know all this? Very simple, Miss Lane. The steel cable joining the barge and the tug didn't break. It was cut. Commissioner. Yes, yes. Commissioner, have you heard? Did you get it? Get what? What are you talking about? Turn on your radio. Radio? Radio? What are you talking about? Come on, it's on, Commissioner. Yes, yes. Diaville. What? Calling the city of Diaville. What's that? Listen, What's that? listen. Calling the city of Diaville. The secret empire demands the sum of one million dollars. One million dollars is the price of Diaville. To be paid by midnight tomorrow. If it is not paid, Diaville will cease to exist. This is the yellow mask. Diaville, calling the Shut city of Shut that Diaville. thing off. What does it mean? Kent. What does it mean? Kent, did you hear? The yellow mask. We thought he was dead. Killed when that plane crashed. What's she talking about? Kent, what is it? Commissioner, it means just this. Miss Lane and I have met the yellow mask before. It means that unless you raise one million dollars by midnight tomorrow, Dyerville will be wiped off the face of the earth. Suddenly, like the shadow of a dreadful nightmare, the hand of the yellow mask hangs darkly over Dyerville. Now the reason is clear for the long chain of accidents that plagued the city. The yellow mask has been placing the people of the town in the grip of a deadly terror. What will happen next? What can Superman do in the few short hours that remain? Tune in next time and follow the story. Be sure to tune in the next thrilling installment of the amazing transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Now, Superman. When we last saw him, Superman, as Clark Kent, stood amazed in the office of the city commissioner of Dyerville with Lois Lane as the radio blared the threat of the yellow mask. Unless the sum of one million dollars was paid within 36 hours, Dyerville would be wiped into oblivion. As our story continues, 
24 of the precious 36 hours have already passed. Once again, Kent and Lois Lane are in the office of the commissioner, while a dark cloud hangs ever lower over the city's heart. Listen. What's that? Half past 12? Half past 12. Don't keep thinking of the time, Commissioner. Confounded, Kent. What else can I think of? You say yourself, this fellow, this yellow mask means what he says. Yes, I'm afraid that's true enough. Uh Commissioner, suppose you were going to destroy Dyerville. How would you do it? Kent, you're out of your mind. No, I see what he means, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Is there any way you can think of any sudden disaster that would destroy the city at once? Why, fire, I imagine, or flood. Flood? Yeah. You mean a flood from the river? No, not exactly. Flood from the hills. Flood from the hills? How do you mean? Well, here, look here. Take a look at this map on the wall. It shows Dyerville and its suburbs. Ah, Right up in the fold of the hills. Yes, that's it, Kent. Right under the mountains. And you see that black line just above? Uh What's that? Well, that's the Harley Dam with the lake up above. Say, come to think of it, if I were bent on wiping Dyerville off the map, I'd blow out the Harley Dam, if I could. Commissioner? Yes? If the dam did go out, what would happen? The end of the world, Kent, so far as Dyerville's concerned. There's a lake behind it that's ten miles long, billions of gallons of water. And it would all come down on Dyerville? Every drop of it. Mm, and wipe out the town? It could actually do that? Yes, it could. Excuse me. City Commissioner's office. This is your friend, the Yellow Mask, Commissioner. The Yellow Mask? Kent, the mask again. I'm calling to remind you that you have only 24 hours to go. 24 hours before every man, woman, and child in Dyersville will drown like a rat unless I get $1 million in cash. Tell your committee that. Goodbye. Oh, wait. 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 My heavens, I've got something to go on now. I'll have that call traced. Save yourself the trouble, Commissioner. What? You won't find anything. We've dealt with the yellow mask before. Yes, but, but where was he? What did he mean? I don't know where he was, but it's plain enough what he meant. I heard what he said about drowning every man, woman, and child like a rat. He means to destroy the dam. The dam? Commissioner. Yes? We've got till midnight. Now, I've met the mask before and didn't come off second best. This isn't the time for boasting, Mr. Kent. I'm sorry, Miss Lane. Call it confidence if you like. Man, don't stop to split hairs. What are you going to do? You stay here, Commissioner, in case the mask sends in another message. And meanwhile, Miss Lane and I will have a look at that dam. Oh, yes, and, and put in a call to the police and the National Guard. Have every available man on duty from now till midnight. Come along, Miss Lane. Uh, keep in touch with me by phone, Kent. And lots of luck. We'll need it, Commissioner. So long. Borrowing a car, Kent and Lois Lane start at once on the lonely mountain drive to the top of the Harley Dam. And meanwhile, safe in his secret hideout near the dam, the yellow mask gives quick instructions to his henchman, Kino. Are you there, Kino? Come inside. Okay, boss. What's doing? There'll be a lot doing, Kino, quite a lot. Promptly at midnight, we destroy 30,000 people. Within the next half hour, we destroy two. Which two? That news reporter, Clark Kent, and his friend, Miss Lois Lane. Uh, Where are they? I have been informed they are driving toward the dam in a car. You will meet that car, Kino, and carry on from there. Well, how do I stop them, boss? Very simply. Look here. You see that dynamo in the corner? Yeah. I will start it going. I know how it runs. But you don't know how it stops, Kino, except in the usual way. But now, see here. Hey, uh, what's that little box? A very useful invention, Kino. One of my own. Hardly bigger than a camera. But I point it at the dynamo. Watch carefully, Kino. And press this button. Hey, the dynamo, it stopped. Naturally. Anyone can do it. Even you, Kino. With my little box. Uh, How's it work? Never mind that, Kino. The point is that it does work. And that you can work it. Do you know the abandoned cabin where the road makes a right angle turn? Oh, yeah, sure. Good. You will go there and be ready when Mr. Clark Kent comes by in his car. Uh, What do I do, boss? Hide inside the cabin. When you see the car approaching, point the box through the window directly across the road. And what will happen? The car will stop instantly, Kino. No fooling. Uh, Why? Ignition trouble, Kino. The engine will stop running. And if you do your part thereafter, so will Mr. Kent. Okay, boss. I guess I catch on. That's all. Now go. Don't make any mistakes either. I am coming. Uh, 
And do you mind telling me, Mr. Kent, just what you propose to do when we get to the dam? Oh, just look around, Miss Lane. See what we can see. And do you think you'll be likely to see anything that's escaped the police? Oh, I might. Surprises do happen. Hey, here's a crossroad or a turn or something. Wonder which way we go now. Oh, don't you know the way? Well, that fellow at the garage didn't say anything about a crossroad. Well, why don't you stop and ask? Maybe there's somebody in that old cabin over there. Ah, uh, doesn't look like it. Ah, oh, we're all right. There's a sign. Harley Dam, turn right. What's the matter? That's funny. The motor stopped dead, just like that. I'm not blind, Mr. Kent, nor deaf. I can see it stopped. You think if you brought your mind to bear, you could find out why? Can't be. We're out of gas. I filled up before we left. Oh, well. What are you going to do? Bring my mind to bear. I'll just sit where you are while I do it. Maybe there's something wrong with the wiring. I'll take a look. Mr. Kent, look out! Okay, boys, let him have it. Hey, what's the big idea? What are you doing? Hey, come on, folks. You've got to take with the yellow mask. Come on, here. Come on, come on, Lotus. Yellow mask wants to see you. Come on, Dad. Overpowered, Kent and Lois Lane are dragged away from the car and carried into the abandoned cabin by the side of the road. Kent, realizing at once from Kino's words that the mask is behind the attack, pretends weakness in the desperate hope of learning the mask's plans. Tossed in a room by himself, tied hand and foot, he watches with interest as Kino enters and arranges a mechanism on the floor with wires. What are you doing there? And what have you done with Miss Lane? Uh, Miss Lane? Oh, she's okay, pal. Right in the next room. Kent! Kent, let me go! Kent! Kind of restless, ain't she? Well, that won't last long, not more than five minutes, after I get this fixed. What are you doing with that battery? Well, what do you think? I'm fixing up a nice little one-way ticket to dreamland for you and the gal both. There. No, I reckon she's set. What is that thing? Don't worry, pal. You'll find out. You're not figuring by any chance on blowing us up, are you? Smart guy catches right on. That's murder, Kino. Only if they catch you. I'd think twice if I were you. So it's lucky you ain't me. Well, so long, pal. Me and the rest of the boys have a date up above near the dam, and we gotta keep it. So long, and pleasant dreams. Oh, the devils. Planning to blow us up. Well, there are several ways of playing that game, my friend. <laughs> It. Gotta get going. I don't see any reason for just lying here and watching that bomb go off. Here's where Clark Kent takes time out. It's Superman's turn. I'll just snap these ropes and take that battery thing apart. Ah. Now I think it's time to leave. We've got a date at the dam, too, you know. I'm coming, Miss Lane. Lock the door, have they? Well, I need a little light exercise. Oh, she's fainted. That's lucky. So much the better. When she comes to, she'll never know what happened. Ah, I've got to pick her up and get out of here. I'd like to follow Kino to where the mask is hiding out. But I'm afraid to leave Lois here alone. It wouldn't do to take her with me. I'll go back to the dam. Up! Up! And away! Carrying the unconscious form of Lois Lane in his arms, Superman leaps into the sky and heads toward a patch of woodland near the dam where he can arrive without being seen. And meanwhile, on the dam itself, troops patrol and police keep watch. Suddenly, a car roars up and stops with a wild scream of brakes. Commissioner, uh, we didn't expect you up here. Well, never mind that, Sergeant. Quick, have you found anything? No, sir, not a thing. Has there been a reporter up here, a fellow named Kent? Kent? Yeah. Uh, no, sir, nobody by that name. Oh, here he comes now, and the girl with him. Oh, Kent! Kent! Coming, Commissioner. Well, how did you get up here so fast? Uh, I followed you. Just after you left my office, I got a message. But, great heavens, what's the matter with Miss Lane? Uh, I'm all right. I don't remember. Oh, we, uh... We had a little accident driving up. Accident? Nothing serious, though, Commissioner. Well, is she hurt? Oh, no, no. Miss Lane will be all right. Tell me now, you, you say you got a message? Uh, come out here, Kent. Out on top of the dam, where we won't be overheard. All right. Oh, uh, you come too, Miss Lane. Commissioner. Yes? What is it? Another message from the mask? Now, wait a minute. I'll show it to you. What the... What? What's oh, the dam! What's happening? Kent, Kent, do you hear that? Do you feel it? It's the dam. Yes. It's beginning to shake. Get out of here. Run for the shore. Quick. Come on. Get out of here. Quick. 
Sudden crisis at the Harley Dam. What is the meaning of the ominous rumbling, and has it anything to do with the mysterious message the commissioner got, the message that brought him racing to the dam? Tune in next time and follow the story. And remember, be sure to tune in the next thrilling installment of the amazing transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky. Look. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. And now, Superman. When we last saw him, Superman, as Clark Kent, had come to the town of Dyerville with Lois Lane to save it from the grim designs of the Yellow Mask, who had threatened to destroy it unless the city paid him the huge sum of a million dollars within 36 hours. Kent has discovered that the mask intends to wipe out the mighty Harley Dam above the city and sweep away every living thing in the resulting flood. But how the mask plans to break the dam, guarded as it is by heavily armed police, is still a mystery. Today, as our story continues, sudden terror has seized a small group standing on top of the dam. Less than 12 hours to go before the end of the time limit set by the yellow mask. But already strange rumbling shocks far below the surface of the water sound the warnings of disaster. Kent... Lois Lane and the city commissioner of Dyerville, caught on the roadway of the dam, race wildly for the shore. What's that, Miss Lane? Miss Lane! Come on, come on. Don't stop to look back. Is it going now? No, I don't think so. Take it easy, commissioner. That noise, whatever it was, it's it's all over now. What's it there? Kent. I give you my word, I thought it was all over right that minute. What was it? What happened? I can't imagine. Felt like an earthquake shock. Yes, or an explosion way down under the water. Explosion? Yeah. Say, it might have been at that. But why? Even if the mask is going to blow out the dam, we've still got ten hours by his own word. Yeah, that's right. Till midnight tonight. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Look, here's why I followed you out here. This letter came just after you left my office. What is it? Uh, it's a note. Don't ask me how it came, because I don't know. All I know is that I found it on my desk. I'd have sworn there hadn't been a soul in the room. Here, read it, Kent. All right. To the city commission. The secret empire is becoming impatient. I am not pleased with the way Dyerville meets my demands. Let there be more speed or I may change my mind. Sign the yellow mask. More speed may change his mind. And what's he mean by that? Commissioner, the mask may be fooling us. It's not like him to give such a plain warning. Mr. Kent, I don't understand you. Well, I mean just this. What if the mask doesn't mean to blow up the dam at all? What if he's got some other scheme? Kent, why do you think that? Well, he's let us know too much. Almost looks as if he wanted us all up here while he worked out another plan somewhere else. If that's the case, what can we do? Well, Lois, uh, I mean Miss Lane, you go back to town with the commissioner, back to the meeting. Isn't that your car right over there? Yes, it is. Are you sure that's the best thing to do? No, I'm not sure. Right now, nobody can be sure of anything. Well, I'll take your word for it, Kent. Come along, Miss Lane. Oh, start up, Peters. We're going back. Mr. Kent, what are you going to do? Oh, stay around and keep my eyes open and my ears. All right. Get in, Miss Lane. That's it. And Kent, whatever happens, try and get back to the meeting. I'll do that, Commissioner. That's a promise. Don't forget. And good luck to you. Not only to me, good luck to all of us. Luck, huh? Well, we'll need a little luck. Now that they're gone, I think it's time Clark Kent gave way to Superman. Any of those policemen watching? No. I think I'll have a look underwater and find out where those explosions came from. Here I go. Here. Here's something. Looks like a piece of polished metal. And right up against the dam, too, where the crack is. I can get it loose from the bottom. Now then. Got it. Ride it loose. Now up. Up in the air. And over to shore to see what it is. Up. Up. In the shelter of a group of pine trees, Superman examines the curious object. He is taken from the bottom of Harley Lake. Amazement shows in his eyes. He leaps again into the sky and streaks for the meeting chamber in the council hall of Dyerville, where fear-stricken citizens look at each other with pale, drawn faces. I don't know what to do. Oh, there's no question. 
Don't you know better than to call me out now? Who is it? There he is, Commissioner. Said you knew him. Oh, Kent. Well, quick, man. Has anything happened? Commissioner, where's Miss Lane? She's all right. She's waiting in my office. Well, what about the mask? Well, Commissioner, I've found the reason for that explosion we felt this afternoon. Yes? It was a torpedo. What? A torpedo? That's what I said. An underwater torpedo fired from somewhere up the lake at the face of the Harley Dam. No wonder it shook. Yes, but, but why? The time hadn't expired. What was the reason? Well, number one, to terrify us. Number two... To show us what he could do. Hmm. Commissioner, when the time comes, the yellow mask can blow that dam into a thousand bits. Where is he? Can't we find him and stop him? Well, we might if we had time. Right now, he could be anywhere on Harley Lake, and it's getting dark. No time for that, Commissioner. Uh, what's the meeting doing? Oh, nothing. Talking it over, arguing back and forth. We have a radio in there in case the mask sends another message. Oh. And the proceedings are being broadcast so that everyone in Dyerville will know what's going on. Well, will they pay the money? Well, I don't know. Do you think... Look here, Commissioner. Yes? Now, tell me quickly. If the dam does go, how does the water come down on the city? Billions of gallons, Kent. Well, there wouldn't no, be no, a chance. No, no, that, that, that's not what I mean. What's its course? Which way does it go? And down through the Jefferson Gorge, and then into the valley. And Dyerville's right in the way. Through the gorge? Yes. Commissioner, if you could block that gorge, what would happen? Why, I don't know. Yes, yes, I do, too. And the flood would go down the old riverbed. And miss the city? Miss it entirely, and join the river again two miles below Dyerville. Commissioner, yes? could you dynamite that gorge? Block it up? Well, I don't know. Uh, no, 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 we couldn't. Not in the time we had. Well, try it. Call in the Army. Have their engineers get right out there and set charges. It's your only chance. Well, Kent, if you think... Well, if that's the only way... Uh, uh, listen, they're calling for a vote. I've got to go back in there, Kent. You'd better come, too. They'll make a final decision. Come along. All right. Well, gentlemen... Are you ready for the question, gentlemen? Yes. yes. Put it to a vote. We've made up our minds. They can't blackmail us. Gentlemen, it has been moved and seconded that no further action be taken in the matter of the demands made on Dyerville by the figure known as the Yellow Mask. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? It is so voted. Gentlemen, you have made your decision, and I think a wise one. The people of this city cannot yield to the threat of fear. Very well, gentlemen. You have made your decision, and I have made mine. Where is it, Commissioner? It's coming over the radio. I shall not wait until midnight. I shall destroy your city now, at once, that others may know what it means to defy the will of the Yellow Mask. Run for your lives, you fools. Save them if you can. Another threat. Yes. I have released my torpedoes. The flood is already on its way. Order! Order, gentlemen. He can't mean it. That was just a threat. He can't do it. Now keep your seats, gentlemen. Keep, yes. Whose voice was that broadcasting? Well, you heard it on the radio yesterday. You know who it was. But I don't believe him. Where's that news reporter? Where's Clark Kent? Yeah. Where is he? Give us a minute to go. Where's the guard? Where's the commissioner? Yes, Miss Lane. What's the matter? Quiet. Yes. All of you. Listen. A phone call just came in, Commissioner. Yes. The dam. It's been blown to pieces. Blown. Harley Dam is destroyed. The flood is coming down on Diary. And meanwhile, where is Clark Kent? Vanished from the scene, changed in a twinkling to the flying form of Superman. Faster than an airplane, red cloak streaming in the wind, he rushes back up the valley to meet the boiling, roaring flood of Harley Lake, pouring down toward the narrow gorge of the Jefferson River. I've worked fast. This has got to be the time. First to see if that devil was telling the truth, then to block up the gorge. It's one chance in a thousand. Even Superman can't hold back a flood. Oh, it won't hurt me. I can't drown. But it can kill every living soul in Dyerville. Faster! Faster! Ah, there it is. Going like a mill race. So you did it after all, Mask. Well, let's see if there's still time to stop you. Back to the Jefferson Gorge. Racing ahead of the flood, Superman swoops down to the only place where it can be turned from the doomed city. The narrow bend of the man-made gorge. Rocky cliffs rise a hundred feet on either side. Down thunders a towering wall of angry water. There it is. Can't get there ahead of the water, but maybe I can block it off. Down! Down! 
tearing at the granite walls. Blood waters raging on every hand. Superman rips into the living rock, sends great masses plunging to the foot of the gorge. But more is needed, and yet more. The water is thundering through. A great point of stone hangs high overhead. Ah. Uh. One last chance. If I can rip that loose, crash it down there in the middle. Uh, here it goes. Uh. Uh. Not much time. Once more. Uh. It's cracking. It's starting to go. Ow! It's down. It's done it. It's blocked the gorge. The flood, the flood's going down the old channel. It'll miss Dyerville by half a mile. In the last second of time, Superman tears down the high rocky walls of Jefferson Gorge, turns aside the main stream of the flood, sends it down its old harmless channel, saves the city of Dyerville. And two hours later, in a telegraph office on the city's main street. All right, here comes another sheet. Same address. Perry White, Daily Planet. Well, Mr. Kent, fancy meeting you here. Hello, Lois. Well, they tell me it's all over. The flood missed Dyerville. And once again, do you mind telling me where you've been all the time? Oh, I don't know. Out and around. Well, one thing's certain. This time, it's my story and not yours. Your story? You bet it is. Your cowardly running away cut you right out of it. I've sent Mr. White a complete account of how Dyerville was saved from the flood. This is one time, Mr. Clark Kent, when you weren't in on it. Hiding a smile, Kent turns away. Then the smile abruptly fades. Dyerville is saved, as Lois says. But what of the yellow mask? Suddenly Kent realizes that the mad menace is still at large. And who can tell where his next blow will strike? So be with us again next time and follow the exciting story of Superman. And remember, be sure to tune in the next thrilling installment of the amazing transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.